Hi and welcome to this week's episode of The Profitable Coffee Writer. I'm Helen Nuttall and we today we're discussing all about the myths that subject lines will trigger uh, a spam filter. Okay, so it's just not true. A subject line will not trigger a spam filter. And I'm going to talk about some of the reasons why it won't and then just go into the reasons why a spam filter might be triggered instead. So um, don't mind me, I've got a cup of tea here like I always have, so if you hear me slurping, I apologise, I will try and keep it away from the microphone. Okay, right, so it's all about how your audience is engaging with the email content that's more likely to trigger the spam filter. So if they're finding that, you know, that your email, if they're not enjoying your emails and they click on the the spam button, maybe you'll get them to spam then. You know, it's like, it's, it's something to do more so with their actions than yours. And also it can be like, um, if it can be the layout of your email, but I'll come back to that in a, in a few minutes. Okay, it's great news when, you know, it comes to feeling like, I don't know what to write for the subject lines. It really is a case of being more aligned to yourself. So what I want you to think, instead of worrying about your subject line causing a spam filter to go off, I want you to free yourself up of that uh, misconception. And what I want you to do then is just focus on the value focus on the transformation that you're going to offer that person. So a lot of times now marketers will start with the subject line because they want to stand out in the email inbox. I don't always, it really just depends on the email, but I always have what action I want that subscriber or that person reading that email to take. So the subject line ideally should be something geared towards the ultimate transformation that they're going to make or the result they're going to get or, you know, what, or subtly linked to the action you want them to take. Okay. So let's dig in. You know, like I'm really just relieved to hear this. I was reading this. uh, I have to give credit to the membership management report of 2022 Uh, Because they reported that, you know, like the spam filter is not triggered the way that you think it is. And this for this, (laughs) for me, this means like I can use emojis. I'm not scared anymore. I love standing out in the inbox with that kind of thing. I can use square brackets for emphasis. So like say if I want to put my course name in or the offer that I want to make for them, I'm going to put it at the beginning of the subject line in square brackets and it's going to stand out also. And it's also freed me up to experiment with long and short subject lines because you know what? How have you looked at your inbox recently? It's stacked, isn't it? So there's got to be ways of standing out and those three ways I've just described are ways to stand out. I think more so now with the subject line, it's about us not feeling spammy, not the spam filter, if that makes sense. So what feels aligned to you? What feels good when you send it? So if that subject line is not making you feel good, likely your audience is going to feel the same way because let's let's face it, your audience are probably you, a few steps behind where you are. Um, so just use that to consider actually when you're thinking about your subject lines and you've freed yourself up out of that mindset that it's going to set a spam filter off. It's just not. But let's dig into what things that could set the spam filter off that you could consider when you, you're doing your email marketing next month. So images and design can do it. Uh, I send quite uh quite simple emails um my email service provider at the moment is convertkit i'm dabbling with a couple of others that are linked to like funnel software but at the moment i'm using convertkit and convertkit can produce me some beautifully you know like simple emails and they look like 
they've come from one of my friends because it's just text basically and I, I like to insert a couple of images especially my newsletters but I don't want to go all out on design because it could prevent people from reading it it could sit in their spam folder because you know if maybe later uh, images that are taking a long long time to load or maybe you know it only takes a little section of code to be wrong in an email and it won't display properly and the spam filter's like bah, i'm not playing with that so i would keep this is my point of view i would keep your email design and images to the minimum every so often when you're promoting something i think it's a really good idea to have them in there because it, it gives your audience a break from like a long sales email definitely um but they're more likely to reach more people and you can always like on the email service providers you can see like say particularly i think kajabi does it where you can see how many emails it's actually reached uh with its success rate so if your success rate goes up you know on, on an email service provider that that shows you that uh, brilliant the other one that can hinder you is also choosing the wrong email service provider so i've heard things in the past now i'm not not dissing any companies but at one point one company uh, that has a monkey on its logo um was really struggling there were people left, right and centre reporting that they had a way lower delivery rate. So how many people actually saw their emails as opposed to how many people were on their list. And it caused a lot of people to leave them because they realised that, you know what, to make my business as viable as possible, I have got to get my percentage up of how many people these emails are actually delivering to so always just do well i do a google search usually and just find out you know the stats for the different email service providers the ones like convertkit aweber um, active campaign constant contact are pretty good for delivery kajabi's not bad as well um so it's all you don't want to be moving just as you've set everything up particularly if you're setting up automations and welcome sequences it'd be a nightmare to have to move so just have a look at those the percentage delivery rate when you're planning which email service provider to use i understand that some of you have probably got one that that links directly maybe to your course platform and that's absolutely fine let's do a bit of research and if that service provider is lower than par, then I would honestly recommend to get a separate one and just link it to your course platform. Most most uh, email service providers do do that with the course platforms. Right, so another one that could be preventing you from reaching the whole of your audience is sending from an email address that is not linked with your website. So what I mean by this is, like say for example, my website is helennuttall.com. Okay, so what you can do is you can get a Google workspace that is linked to that domain. So I chose, well, basically it's something at and then the website. So I have Helena at helenutall.com rather than like helenutall at gmail.com because the at gmail.com tells people's inboxes it's not related to an actual website. And it can set up spam filters. So in my blog post this week, I have got some explanations on which kind of addresses do that can trigger that kind of thing. Like I've got an email address, um, helennuttalluk at gmail.com. And I always had trouble, like as well, like linking to services as well, because I didn't believe that I had a website connected. So you've got to think about like linking it early on and what you can do with google is you can actually go through a process that actually shows google that you own that so that workspace owns that website so there's no like difficulty particularly when you're delivering to gmail inboxes okay so the other one that i would take care of and it's a professionalism as well is like if you've got an email like say something like Helen two two three nine three nine JT. It doesn't look good anyway. Um, so just consider what your email 
looks like as you're planning your brand. And the email also, uh, I, I put a, an example of at blueyonder.com. Some, uh, some providers like that are not as well serviced anymore. So it's like they don't get through as many spam filters either. So it's it's best to, to invest in the main providers like Google. And yeah, that that pretty much sums up what happens, you know, when you've got emails and, and you're just thinking, why is it why is it not delivered? So it could be design, it could be your email address that's not linked with your website, it could be that you've got an email service provider that's under par. Um but it's not your subject lines. Okay, so the exciting thing about subject lines is the more you write them, the better you get at them. So I'd say I encourage you to keep adding, make sure that the subject line really stands out and, sh- and and gives them that massive benefit of what you're offering or the massive or the transformation that only you can offer and no one else. Okay, because in today's world, let's face it, just email inboxes are crowded and you need to be that one who they look forward to receiving your emails and they utterly they can see a massive difference between yours and other people's you stand out because they like know and trust you you have a different way with things and you're not afraid to experiment so yeah let me know how you get on with your subject lines and what you've done to minimize uh, the effects of a spam filter okay can't wait to come back next time uh, with more myths about email copywriting